Hi guys, and welcome to video 5.1. Uh, today we are going to continue on writing electron configurations, but today I'm going to show you how to do it by just looking at the periodic table. So no need to have that energy pyramid totally memorized or have to pull it out every time. If you have a periodic table in front of you, you're going to be able to do this. It's going to tell you the energy level and the shape of the orbital that it's in just by looking at the periodic table. And then the best part is at the end, I'm going to show you a shortcut. It's gonna come in real handy when we have to do some of those really long ones that are at the bottom of the table that you hate to do. So when we look at an atom and how it actually reacts and why it reacts, its chemical properties are all going to be governed by its highest energy filled orbitals. We know we start by filling in the lowest and we go to the highest. Well, it's those electrons that are in the highest energy that actually govern how a atom or element reacts. These electrons are called valence electrons. So these are our outermost electrons. These are the ones that we can be lost, gained, shared um, when we start building or doing some reactions with the different elements. What you're going to notice on the periodic table is that the length of a period, remember the periods run horizontal. So the length of the period is going to be determined by the number of electrons that can occupy the sublevels being filled in that period. So that's a lot of words right now, but once we look at the periodic table, we're going to see how it's laid out and how this actually, this statement makes much more sense. So let's look at a periodic table. Remember, we have an S sublevel. S sublevel is spherical. And how many electrons can it hold? Well, that's two electrons. So guess what? Our S block on the periodic table is too long. So it's two boxes in length. So one electron, two electrons. You'll notice here that we have this box, which is helium. It's kind of over by itself, uh, but it would fit real nicely into this spot. So we'll talk a little bit later about why helium's over there and not over here, but you can see how it would fit. So we would have two across. So our S block in our periodic table are the first two columns. Then we have the P block. Well, the P block has three orbitals, so it holds six electrons. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a block here that is six electrons long. So we call it the P block. Then we have the D block. The D block is made up of these transition metals. D block can hold 10 electrons. So our D block is 10 long. So if we do this, we see that we have this area here. Well, depending on the periodic table you're looking at, sometimes it's filled in, sometimes it says it's numbers this through this. Those two are often found at the end of this section down here to make up that area. So usually the last ones listed in our group that is pulled out down here are also part of our D block. Now, if you remember your energy pyramid, you'll remember that we do 4S and then we go to 3D before we hit 4P. So we need to remember that when we are looking at the D block using the periodic table, that the D block is one less than the energy level or the period we are in. So we will get to that when we start looking at practice. You'll see how that one less is going to play in. So somewhere you gotta remind yourself, when I hit this block, I'm going to be one less than the period that I am in. And then we have the F block. So you can see that area that we circled in the last slide here. That actually starts the F block, again, depending on how your periodic table is set up. F block is 14 electrons. 
or it can hold up to 14 electrons. So you'll see that we have 14 purple squares highlighted. Now similar to our D block, our F block also has uh, some rules and it's going to be two less than the energy level we are in. So let's do some practice. We're not going to write an energy pyramid. We're going to look at just its position on the periodic table. Cool thing is we don't even care how many electrons in there. Its position on the periodic table is going to do all of that for us. So first thing we want to do is we want to label our energy levels. So the top of the periodic table is always our lowest energy levels. So this would be the first energy level, the second energy level, the third energy level, the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Basically the period it's in is going to be the energy level that we are in. Now down here, remember since these fit in here, this is also six and this is seven. So they're not um, our eight and nine. They are, or they do fall into our six and seven. We basically pull it out just to save space. Otherwise this periodic table would get very, very long. So if we start looking at sulfur, so let's start over here. What we're going to do as we write these is follow in our periodic table starting up in this corner and we're going to work ourselves all the way across until we're at the end of the period and then move on to the next one. We know that this is the S block. We are in the first period. So if we are doing our electron configuration for sulfur, we are going to go one because we are in the first period. The first block I hit is S and I have S1 and S2. So I have one S2. Then I go on to my second period. So now I have two S. I've covered both of them. So two S, two. Moving on, nothing there. I hit here, which is also in the second period. And I cover one, two, three, four, five, six within the P block. So I am still in the second period. I am in the P block and I covered or had to go through all six of those elements. So then I move on. So I'm in my third period. So I'm in my third energy level. So I have three S, covered both of them, so three S two. Still in my third period. So now I just count over until I hit my element. So I'm in the third energy level, I'm in the P block, and I count over one, two, three, four. So then I'm P four. So that would be my electron configuration for sulfur without having to do any of the energy pyramid. If we're going to do cobalt, which is here, we know that we're going to need to go a little bit further than sulfur, but you can see we're going to do the same thing that we did with sulfur. So one, we hit our S block, first period, S block, we went over both of them. Second period, S block, and we go over both of them. Still in the second period, hit my P block, and I have to go through all six of them. Third period, hit my S block, and I go past both of them. Third period, hit my P block, and this time I'm going to go through all of them, so 3P6. Now I'm in my fourth period, so I'm four, going again, S block, hit them all, so S2. Now I hit this section. Remember, this is my D block now, and my D block is one less. So when I hit my D block, I need to remember that this is going to be technically a three in energy level. So I'm gonna be 3D, and then I just count how many over I am. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So three, D, seven. Let's try the next one. Borium. Again, we're going to have everything from cobalt. So we're one S, two, two S, two, two P, 
6, 3s, 2, 3p, 6, 4s, 2, 3d. So remember 3 because we're minus 1 of the period that we are in when we hit the d block. We're going to go through all of them this time. So 3d, 10. Back up when we're in the p, so we're back up to our fourth period. So this would be 4p. We got to cover all of them. So 4p6. Back down to 5. So we are 5. We're in the s block and we have to go over both of them. Hit here. So 1 less than the period I'm in. So I'm 4d and I'm going to cover all of them. So all 10 squares. Back up into 5 p, so p block, and I'm going to cover all six of them. See how much easier this is than trying to follow that energy pyramid? Now I'm into six, so six period, s block, cover two of them. Now I'm going to hit the yellow section. So remember, this is now my f section, and it's going to be two less. So this is also going to be a 4. So this is going to be 4f, and then I have to come down to the corresponding row. So I'm going to go 4f, and then how many over did I go? Well, I had to cover all of them. So there's 14 of them. And then back up here, which is 1 less, so this is b5. D, because I'm in the D block, and then I count over. Remember, this was my 1, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So 5, D, 5. And let's look at the last one. So if we look at PR, uh, we're going to do some of what we just did. So we're going to, once again, 1s2, 2s block, s2, 2p block, so 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, number 3 for our d block, so 3d10, back up to 4p6, 5s2, 4d10, Back up 5p6, 6s2, down 2 from 6 because f is minus 2, so 4f, f1, f2, f3, so 4f3. So again, you just have to remember your blocks on the periodic table. So we have S, P, D, which is minus one of the period you're in, and then we have F, which is minus two of the period that you are in. Of course, this is the beginning of our D. What we could do as a shortcut is a noble gas notation. And why can we use this? Well, that is because noble gases contain full electron configurations for energy, for any energy level. Remember, noble gases are that last column in the periodic table. So they are full. Their outer shells or their valence electrons are full. 
they don't have any mismatched unpaired electrons in any of their orbitals. So we can use them as kind of a starting point. So how do we do the shortcut? We're going to take that noble gas symbol and we're going to put it in brackets because we're saying that we have all of the electrons, all of our orbitals filled up to that point. And then we're going to follow that by the rest of the electron configurations. We only have to start after the, that noble gas. So let's see how this works. We want to write the noble gas configuration for the following elements. So we're going to label our energy levels. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the other thing you want to know then are where the or what the noble gases are. When you're doing this, of course, you won't have to fill these in because you'll have a periodic table. So we have H E N E A R K R X E R N and then one that remains unnamed. So when we are looking at doing electron configurations, we want the one that is full compared to our element that we are looking at. So if I'm looking at vanadium here, I am going to go to the one that is one energy level above and all the way at the end. So for vanadium, I need argon. So again, I went up one level and then I go all the way over to that uh, noble gas. So if we're looking at vanadium and I'm doing noble gas notation, I'm going to take argon and I'm going to put it in brackets. That means that I have a full shell or full electron configuration up to that point. So now I only have to start at the period that vanadium is in. So I'm going to start with four. So I start in period four and again I hit that S block. So I'm going to do four S two and then I hit my D block. So remember that's three. So three D and count over one, two, three. Wow, so much shorter than what we were doing. And reason we like these compared to the other ones. So these are our valence electrons. These are the ones that are going to have any effect in how this element reacts. More so the S because it's further out than these D's but how it reacts could have some effect with those Ds. So those are the ones we write because those are the ones that are important to the actual element and how it's going to react or its chemical properties. Let's look at ruthenium. So again, we're getting further down in that periodic table. We're adding more electrons, but again, it's not going to really be any longer. So we're going to go up one level and all the way over. So for ruthenium. We're going to start with Kr in brackets because that's the one that's all the way over and then whatever period we're in. So then we're starting in the fifth period. So 5s2, 4d, and how many over? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six. Again, nice and short even though it's much further down in the periodic table. So let's look at UU. Wow, if you looked up this element on the periodic table, it would have 114 electrons. That would make for a very long electron configuration. Yes, I know I've made you write them, but this time you can write the shortcut. So same thing, we're going to go up one level and all the way over. So for our unnamed element UU, we have RN in brackets. And then we start at the period. So 7. So we have 7S2, so S block, 2 over. 
Then we hit the F block. So remember this is two less than the period you're in. So then I have five F and it looks like I'm going to go through all of them. So that's five F 14. Then I hit my blue, which is my D block. So remember that my D block is one less than the period I'm in. So I'm at six D. So then it looks like I have to go through all of them. So I'm at six D, oops, 10. And then I'm back up into seven because P doesn't have any restrictions. So seven P, count how many over, one, two, seven P, two. And finally, ER. Now we have to remember, since it's down here, we can't just go one over and use UUO. Remember, this is in the sixth energy level. So that means we need the period, or the noble gas that it is in the fifth energy level. So we go to five all the way over, which is one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be xenon. We're going to put xenon in brackets. And then we go from the sixth period. So we have 6s2. Hit the F block. So that is, sorry, we can put it in here, 4f. And since we're still in the yellow, we just count how many over. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, whoops, I don't know why I superscripted that. I'll just take that off. So that would be four F twelve. And that is your shortcut. So we'll have more practice with this in class. And if you have any questions, make sure you ask.